We are back for part two of Understanding Exposure, so here we go with another episode of Peeling the Banana. Here's my PSA for this week. I was using my hatchet and I cut myself, and I had to get a tetanus shot. Don't play with knives. This week I want to talk more in depth about the exposure triangle and why you might make certain changes over other ones. Your exposure triangle is your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. If you make changes to one, you need to make changes to at least one other thing. So how do you decide which one to change? That's going to depend on what kind of photography you're doing. Your shutter speed is expressed in seconds, usually fractions of a second. If you are shooting a very fast moving subject like sports or your dogs running and playing, you're going to want to use a very fast shutter speed to capture that action. Usually the slowest shutter speed you will want to use for stop action is 1 1200th of a second. If you are after smoky flowy rivers, you're going to want to use a very slow shutter speed, sometimes even up to a second, and definitely use a tripod. The second side of the exposure triangle is aperture. If you remember from my depth of field episode, aperture is one of your biggest tools for controlling your depth of field. The smaller the number of the aperture, the wider the opening, and the smaller depth of field you will have. If you want a large range of your image in focus, you are going to want a higher or smaller aperture. There's an old analog news photography saying, F8 and be there. News photographers were able to put their cameras in F8, show up to events, and capture the images that really needed to be shown to make stories more compelling. F8 is a good general purpose aperture. It gives you a good depth of field while still allowing enough light in to capture life as it unfolds. Landscape images, which are often shot on tripods to allow for very sh slow shutter speeds, will utilize high apertures so that the entire image is in very sharp focus. The stunning images of Ansel Adams and the other large format film photographers of his day weren't called the Group F64 for no reason. And of course the third side of the exposure triangle is ISO. In the simplest terms, ISO is the sensitivity to light of your sensor. In the film days, it was the speed of your film. For digital, a higher ISO makes your sensor more sensitive to light, but it also is going to add noise to your images. Increasing your ISO might also be the factor that allows you to shoot that action shot at 1 1200th of a second instead of something slower that might add blur. My personal preference is to touch ISO as a last resort. Um, things like Instagram and Facebook already degrade the quality of your image, so if I can start without adding extra noise into my image, that's what I'm going to do. So how do you find the right balance in the exposure triangle when you're shooting? The best thing to do is think about your final image. What is it that you're trying to compose? If you're taking portraits, you probably don't want to have a lot of blur in your images. An easy rule of thumb to know how slow of a shutter speed you can use while hand holding your camera is not to shoot slower than the focal length of your lens. So for example, if I'm shooting with my 50 millimeter lens, I'm not going to try to shoot lower than uh, 1 50th of a second and hold my camera by hand. If I'm shooting portraits, I probably also don't want competition from the background. So for these cases, I'm going to shoot with a wide aperture, somewhere between f2.8 and f5.6. If I'm just shooting one dog, I might shoot at f1.8, but if it's more than one, I'm probably not going to be shooting that wide. And that's going to allow the background to fall away. On the other hand, if we've just completed a great hike and I really want the environment to be part of my image, I might be shooting at more like f16 so that everything is in focus. In that case, I might have to bump up my ISO. Depends on what time of day we are and what the rest of the lighting is like. So for a portrait of Jello with mountains behind him, I would want to shoot with a shutter speed that allows me to still have a focused image hand holding my camera. I want an aperture that is going to be wide enough that Jello and the background is in focus. And then I'll use my ISO to balance it out and get good exposure. And my closing words for this episode, 
I started doing these because I really wanted to help people be able to get the images that they want to make. I've been talking a lot about rules of photography, but I really want to stress that rules are made to be broken. I think it's important to know how to make good images. I think it's important to understand all of these things, to understand aperture and shutter speed. But if you don't want perfect photos, if you don't want your action stopped, if you like motion blur, go ahead and shoot however you want to shoot. Don't be influenced by what everybody else is doing or what you hear people saying you should be doing. Make the images that you want to make because at the end of the day, you liking your photography is probably the most important thing you can do.